الحمد لله دو ما شاء الله اون اورا لو دوزيام جور Et comment ça se passe comment je, je pas vu est-ce que c'est ouvert au grand public ou là c'est limité euh, c'est ouvert mais mais après euh, qui va participer c'est les personnes qui qui ont qui, des, des, qui ont des non des, ils vont s'inscrire on a même donné un open ou donné un free parce que c'est la première fois où c'est c'est à distance euh, mais il y a des tests de mémorisation ça veut dire les personnes qui connaissent pas les, les techniques de mémorisation ils vont être frustrés Ah, tu vas leur demander de mémoriser 100 chiffres dans 5 ce, dans ce minutes ou là, des centaines de chiffres dans 5 minutes, tu vas dire. <rire> Est-ce que, est que tu peux partager avec nous quand tu auras un petit moment Tu peux partager le lien pour au moins comprendre comment ça fonctionne Après, pour alors, comprendre comment ça, ça marche. Euh, le lien pour s'entraîner Pour voir déjà le, pour voir le déroulement de la compétition. Oui, en fait, on a dit que le week-end de l'Aïd, on a eu un memory league, quand c'était... Je n'ai pas fait attention. Non, on a, on a fait attention. le streaming. Mais, mais je, je, vais, je vais chercher des choses, voir comment ça se passe, ou je partagerai avec vous. Ok, génial. D'accord. <rire> mais ça, ça fait toujours du plaisir. Je n'ai pas fait physiquement, mais... Euh, mais tu le fais avec passion, quoi. Ah oui, c'est une passion pour moi. Ça, très <rire> Super. Je viens de lancer sur Facebook. Je ne sais pas si tu as la main. Euh, pas encore. Pas encore. Je vais voir aussi. Voilà. Tu as la main. Excellent, bah, écoute, euh, bonne séance alors. Merci, euh, tu, tu restes quand même. Allez, oh. <rire> non, je resterai pas. Non. <rire> je suis vraiment, je suis pas. Et là, bon courage. Merci, merci, merci. Oh, bye. Si vous voulez, la caméra est là. Bienvenue Cidris, ça fait, ça fait, <rire> ça fait, fait attention. <rire> C'est pas grave, on est, on est tous. Euh... Une famille. On est tous on en, une famille. On, on est une grande famille, on est en mode confinement. <rire> voilà. Merci déjà, merci beaucoup euh, pour tous les efforts. C'est pas évident, c'est pas facile. Je sais que vous assistez à, à tous les webinaires. Nous, au moins, on assiste à ceux qu'on modère et les autres euh, quand on peut, mais je sais que c'est bref, euh, il fait tous les efforts pour, euh, pour assister à tous les webinaires sans exception. C'est un grand effort qu'il fait en plus de l'effort de nous ramener les, 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 les personnes euh, qu'on cherche, les, les personnes dont on a besoin pour évoluer, pour améliorer notre vie euh, personnelle et professionnelle. Donc, euh, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Nous sommes dans la merci gratitude. à vous, Lala C'est un travail d'équipe. On est ensemble. Hein. Vous aussi, vous faites beaucoup d'efforts. Hein. Vous êtes là, toujours à l'écoute. Vous contribuez euh, vraiment énorme, énormément. Ça me fait vraiment plaisir. Hein. Euh, nous, sommes là pour, euh, nous sommes là pour le club. Le club, il est, il est, il est là pour <rire> nous, mais nous aussi, on est, on est pour le club. Ça fait euh, toujours plaisir. Vous donnez plus d'énergie, madame. <rire> merci. <rire> Merci, Barakallah, au fait que c'est un témoignage que, qui, me fait, qui me fait très chaud au cœur. Alors, alors, nous avons un live.
Madame Salifa, c'est euh, Monsieur Kroon n'est pas encore là. Madame Salifa, il n'est pas encore là. Je suis en train de voir. Bon, il n'est pas encore arrivé, je crois. Il est en route. Je vais essayer de le voir sur Facebook. Si les... il peut répondre. Ah, il est sur Facebook. Oui, euh, je viens de, de lui envoyer, petit coucou. <rire> oui, je crois qu'il est là. Il est là, je crois qu'il est juste en train de se connecter. Pour nous, euh, euh... Hello, hello les amis, donc il y a Steven Schklund qui arrive tout de suite, je ne sais pas qui a, en attendant qu'il arrive, qui, qui est parmi nous et qui a assisté à la dernière séance. Est-ce qu'on a des, des personnes qui, qui ont déjà assisté à la dernière, le dernier samedi avec Steven Schklund dans le « Let's speak English ». On a, on a tous des nouveaux. Il 
D'accord. On a des, 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 des personnes nouvelles avec, avec nous. Je ne sais pas si c'est sur Facebook, il y a toujours... Est-ce que, est que les personnes sur Facebook ont un problème de son Non, je crois que c'est... que c'est bon. C'est une question ouverte à, à, à tout le monde, même à nos, nos chers abonnés de Facebook, s'ils ont déjà assisté la dernière fois. Et euh, ils ont appris. De, 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 nouvelles, de, de nouveaux concepts, de, de nouvelles approches, tout en apprenant à parler en anglais. Voilà, c est, c est, ça fait plaisir. Il y a des personnes qui, qui re, nous rejoignent pour la première fois. Euh, notre concept de Let's Speak English, tel qu'il qu le propose Sibon Shkron, c'est le training by doing. Il nous, euh, il nous fait parler anglais tout en nous faisant apprendre à chaque fois euh, de nouvelles choses. Un jour, il nous a fait découvrir le Japon. C'était une très belle découverte en anglais. Et la dernière fois, c'était une stratégie de euh, close selling, de la vente. C'était impressionnant. Si je me rappelle bien, c'était le NUT process. Le need, les besoins, urgence, urgence et le trust, la confiance. Aujourd'hui, on va sûrement apprendre de nouvelles choses, de nouveaux concepts. And we will speak English. So, on peut jouer un petit jeu, si vous, vous voulez. Euh, comme ça, euh, notre cher euh, intervenant, quand il va arriver, va nous trouver déjà en parlant anglais. Euh, C'est l'occasion de, de, de pratiquer. Qu'est-ce qui veut se faire présenter et présenter son activité Comme on est dans le club des dirigeants, c'est l'occasion de se... De, ah, on, et et on, a, on a notre cher Munchkron qui va se présenter. <rire> Mais si quelqu'un voulait se présenter avant qu'il arrive, on peut le faire quand même. But, um, uh... Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, thank you for coming. Yeah. We, we, we were all waiting for you. Ah, nice. I was telling them that each time we were learning English with the process training by, by doing, and uh, we were discovering with you um, Multiple things. We have discovered Japan. We have discovered discovered the NUT process, right? For exactly. close sitting. <laughs> and it was very, very nice technique. I have learned with you. And uh, we have with, with us uh, some new people. I okay. guess they have uh, heard about your knowledge and came to, to learn something with you. So thank you, Mr. Mohamed Mashkroon, for uh, coming. Mr. Mohamed Mashkroon is a, uh, an economic and marketing lecturer in uh, Ningbo University in China. Mm -hmm. I, I hope I haven't done any mistake. Mm -hmm. And he is uh, each Saturday uh, teaching us something new in English. Today, I, I'm trying to, to guess We will discover the UAE. UAE, exactly. United um, Emirates, United Arabic. Sorry for my mistake because. Um, yeah, sorry for this mistake. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, 
thank you for your coming. I'm so sorry for my for my delay because I thought that my courses uh, will be will be will be held on uh, at uh, 8 p.m. not 6 p.m. as usual. So that's why I um, uh, I came. I didn't came on time. And thank you for your flexibility. You were so flexible and yeah. <laughs> came to. Yeah, this is uh, flexibility to be reactive and flexible is one of the key to success of any. Um, this is uh, one of the main factors be successful is to deal with um, the um, is to because the life is unpredictable la vie est imprévisible so we have to to always to be reactive to be flexible to be to be responsive and to resolve the issue so we are lucky that that i already uh, i already I, I already host this course before to my Chinese managers, uh, to my Chinese students. So today we will talk about UAE. So, uh, so it's United Arab Emirates. So United Arab Emirates is an Arabic country loc located in, um, in the Middle East, is the gateway and is a bridge between Asia, Africa and Europe. So it's a very strategic place, for, also for Moroccan people, for Moroccan economy. So it will be very interesting to study and also social side. How the map? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thank you so much. So let's move on. So here, first of all, this is a this is the map of UAE. So we can see that it's divided on several Emirates, Emirates. So Emirates, we can say, is divided on several provinces or several um, uh, regions. And each region or each province or each Emirates has its own sovereignty, has its own sovereignty. Um, Okay, um, so this map is, so this one shows that why we're calling United Arab Emirates because it's, it's, it's a, a union of several, uh, of several Emirates and Emirates is a region. So they have their own sovereignty. They have their own um, autonomy and they have their own quite independent on the on 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 the on the political uh, decision and also economic decision so we can see that as, as for so many people dubai is a country dubai is not a country is an emirate and the capital of of dubai is dubai and we have the abu dhabi which is the biggest emirate the biggest region which uh, occupy the largest space in this map. So we have Abu Dhabi, we have Sharjah, we have Dubai, we have Ajman, Um al Quwain, uh, Fujairah, and, and the others. So we can understand that finally, uh, UAE has a quiet, similar uh, state of um, uh, the state of governance which is very inspired from United States of America, which is it's the collection and the union of several states. So, so it's, it's similar to UAE. They provide, they, the central government provide to each Emirates a lot of independent sovereignty and power to manage their own region based on their perception, based on their vision and based on their philosophy of life that's why for example in dubai we can we can understand that it's more open to the foreign countries rather than fujairah 
or, or Las Al Khaimah, which is much more closer. Dubai, for example, the, the, the political Islam in Dubai is more uh, moderate, more tolerant, more tolerant to, to the foreign people. They allowed uh, the foreign people to drink alcohol. Uh, they have some nightclubs and some uh, uh, recreations and loisirs rather, rather than other region. What is the reason of this difference? It's because each region, based on the vision of the leaders, they establish the appropriate uh, political vision. So we can have several emirates, it means several states in one big central government, which is a United Arab Emirate. So, <clears throat> um, so uh, UAE is a member of LOPEC, LOPEC, which is the organization of the petroleum exporting countries, because we, as we all know, this organization regroups uh, all the exporting countries of the, of, of the oil, of the petrol. And also it's a member of the organization of Islamic cooperation, because it's an Islamic country, and also it's a member of the League of Arab States. So the, the common point between Morocco and, and UAE is that Morocco, UAE, they are members of the Islamic cooperation, the Arab state, but, uh, but Morocco is not belonging to the first one OPEC because it's not a producer of the petrol. So, and OPEC regroups Russia, United States of America, uh, Venezuela, Iran, uh, Saudi Arabia, and all the uh, exporting countries. And it's very strategic organization because, because all the policies, all the policies about the pricing, about the level of production is fixed among this organization. So they have a big impact on the economic situation, on the macroeconomic situation. It's, it's in this organization that the country decide whether they raise the production or they decrease the production or they raise the price or not. So we can say that UAE is among of the strategic countries who, who impact the price of this, of the barrel, of, uh, of the petrol barrel. General information about United Arab Emirates. The population is around 1.1 million people. The area is on 77,700 meters square. The major language, of course, is Arabic. The major, the major religion is Islam. The life expectancies is 76 for men, 78, 78 years for women. For example, uh, the life expectancy in Japan is longer than in Arab, Arab uh, United Emirates. Why? This is it's due to the uh, to the environment, to the culture environment, and also to the philosophy and the lifestyle of the people. Uh, in Japan, they have longer expectancy because their their culture, their philosophy is really based on capacity to balance between uh, fulfillment and production rather than uh, in Arabic countries and also the environment. So when you live in the very hot environment, then uh, naturally it will impact our health and our body naturally. And the currency is the dirham. Here is the diag diagnostic of United Arab Emirates. So we can see here, we have the advantages and the weaknesses of this country. And of course, uh, it's very, what, 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 when we are entrepreneur or when we are uh, um, uh, investor or whether you want to live in one country, we, we must study and, and establish a strategy and to know deeply this country because when you, diag when, when you make a diagnostic of this country, you have more visibilities, you have more, uh, uh, you have more uh, perception of, of this future, whether it will be, it's a potential country to invest or not. So, so it's very important to analyze this country. And we can say the first advantage is that politically is quite stable. This country is quite stable politically, 
it's um sorry uh, so this country is quite politically stable rather than uh, uh, other neighborhood countries like iraq or lebanon or uh, iran etc so when you are politically stable you can inspire the foreign investor to come and to invest and to prosper because one of the main ingredients to establish business is to inspire higher credibility and to inspire sustainability there is no business cooperation there is no investment without a long term of vision long term of cooperation and the main support who can ensure this long term cooperation is the stability and peace and also it's diversified and business friendly economy and this is very important like uae <clears throat> has succeeded on on diversifying their economy and to be less and less dependent on their natural resources for example dubai is considered as the trade place as a trade center place and the financial center place in the in the middle east and also it's considered as a trade business place in the middle east you know i will tell you an example for example you know that iran is very uh, you know that dubai and united arab emirates is very friendly in terms of business with iran when it, when, when iranian businessmen want to do, to do business want to trade with china U, uae is considered as the bridge of this cooperation it's because there is no possibility to cooperate directly between iran and the other countries for example china uae offer its offer its platform to be the bridge and and to establish a third uh, a third party cooperation iran uae and the customer of the buyer of iran this is one of the reason why uh, saudi arabia israel was very angry against uae because they helped uh, the iran prosperity of course uae won uae gained by helping uh, iran to avoid uh, the boycott the international boycott to iran but it's uh, it's considered as uh, as a cheat uh, from 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 the neighborhood country of UAE <clears throat> so we can say also it's free trade regime because UAE has established a lot of free trade agreements with several countries among Morocco for example with Morocco and, and UAE we can sell buy export import without paying any tax without paying any import tax so which is very uh, encouraging to do business with UAE and to and to, and to establish an office there. So definitely the main advantage of UAE is that they have anticipated by, by their anticipation and by the political decision. They have opened their economy to the world. They have believed, they have believed in the liberalism rather than other countries like Saudi, Saudi Arabia who really has been fully dependent on the natural resources and, and did not modernize its economy. So definitely UAE is advancing the neighborhood countries due to this due to this open economy or open politics that they have established several years ago. And as, and, and as I say, they have a strong financial cautions. It's because they don't have any debt. It's because they are the lender of the funds due to their high level of wealth. They can really uh, um, attract uh, the foreign funds. And because it's also, it's also considered as, as comme un paradis fiscal is a task paradise or fiscal paradise for so many countries. That's why uh, many investors, many Iranian also investors, they open an office in UAE because it op it's offers a lot of uh, advantages. So my advice is that, of course, UAE, I'm not, do, I'm not lobbying UAE as a platform. It's a very objective analysis because um, I don't have any personal or direct relationship with this country. I've never been there. But 
as a teacher, as given, uh, as uh, talking, describing, and in this country, definitely UAE is one of the most credible platform to do business with, to invest in, and also to, to consider it as a gateway of Europe, Asia, North Africa, and Sub-Saharan African countries. How about the weaknesses of, of, of for any cooperation, for any country, they have advantages and drawbacks. And definitely we can say they have a lack of transparency of quasi public entities. And this is, you know, I will say that is a manque de transparence dans, dans les données publiques, lack of transparency. But this is, I will say, this is a common weakness of all the, conserva the conservative countries. In Saudi Arabia, it, they have the same weakness. If you go wherever in Japan or in China or in South Korea or in Russia, all of Orientalist countries, tous les pays orientaux, all the Orientalist countries, all the conservative countries, they maintain such kind of, uh, they maintain such kind of uh, strength of the, of the political regime. The central political regime is so strong that they control the information inside. There is no democracy. So when there is no democracy, there is no space for transparency. There is no transparency among the public sector. The high weakness, but this is the common weakness, whether in Qatar or UAE or in China or in Russia is that you cannot protest, you cannot pursue and sue on justice, the public companies or the public institutions. Due to this political regime specification, as I said, they provide you security, it's true. They provide you safety, it's true. They provide you capacity to grow your business. But if Sometimes you will leave or you will leave an injustice among the public organization. You cannot never get your due from them. And this is the main drawback of all the conservative countries rather than democratic and more open countries as in, for example, in Scandinavian countries or even in the West uh, European country or United States. This is also, so, every, so in every country where, where you go, they have cons and bonds. Uh, uh, as all you know, I, I, I live in China, my, my residential premise is in China. And I know that, of course, if one day Chinese governments no longer want me or no longer want to cooperate with me and they decide to, to break my contract, I, I can only accept this decision and go back to my country even it was an unfair decision. This is the specificities of all the conservative countries. So definitely there, there is a lack of transparency among the public sector. And of course, it's high dependence on import. And here are talking, what kind of import? Ils ont une forte dépendance aux importations. What kind of importation they are dependent on? They are dependent on the manufacturing product, c'est-à-dire les produits manufacturiers. Because they have, it's true, as I said before, they have, diver they have diversified their economy, but to, to what? To tourism, to finance, uh, to attracting the investment, to real estate. They have a very strong real estate sector, but they don't have a strong industry. So that's why the cooperation between China and UAE is very deep because the cooperation offer the convergence of interest. UAE needs the manufactured items from China and also China needs UAE as a platform to, to serve the Chinese interest in this region. I think um, uh, the highest amount of Chinese investment in the Middle East is in, in UAE. 
uh, two years ago, Xi Jinping has uh, has been welcomed by the Emirates of UAE, and it has been welcomed as the, as a real Chinese emperor, because China has a big impact and has, is more becomes more and more influent in UAE. We, UAE and in Middle East, you should know that China becomes the first consumer and the first buyer of the petrol and oil in the world. And it's the first partner and the first client of the petrol and gas of UAE and of Saudi Arabia. That's why I told you the Chinese power, the Chinese improvement, it's a threat, it's a menace, um, it's a threat to American geopolitical interest. And, I, and also by the economy, they are, it means that the, the most of the revenue, most of the income in this country is provided from the, the hydrocarbon, means petrol and gas. So this is the diagnostic of, the, of, the, of UAE. So in general, to summarize, we can say these countries, the main advantage of these countries is that they inspire stability and peace and therefore sustainability to, 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 attract, to attract businesses. And due to this peace, due to these political stabilities, they attract the foreign investment. A lot of countries want to establish and to do business with this country. Also, the, the other advantage is that they have opened the economy to the world by signing the free trade agreement with several countries, state of America, Europe, they, they, they made or they put uh, uh, on the, they put all, all their interests, all the power uh, on UAE uh, uh, place in the region interest. And the main drawback is, is as I said, in this country you go, you cannot protest. You should, only, you should only follow. You accept the rules, you accept the systems, and you have to be able to gain and to, and to inspire and to, to grow your business. If you want to protest or to get your due or to be in the opposition of the political regime, you have no possibility to get your right. So we have to be flexible. Every people want to live there should accept that. Comme on dit, à Rome, tu fais comme les Romains. In Roma, you do, you do like the Romans, means you should be able to follow the rules. And of, of, one of the main ingredients, one of the main restrictions is that you follow my system. You accept it, well, we don't accept it. You are not welcome to my country. And this is the common point. This is the common specificities of all the conservative countries. Okay, so here is the UAE GDP. So we all, all we can know from, from 2000s, they know a high level of GDP growth here. Can you tell me what is the reason? What is the reason why UAE has not a, a very high and tremendous bonds to to their gdp from 2001 do you know the reason i would like to establish interactions with you so you can um, you can give your your answer if you you have uh, the reason of increase increasing of EAU GPD in this period. 
Okay. So the, the, the reason is so simple. If you analyze the GDP of all the countries from 2001, all the countries has known a big bounce of their economy. The main reason or the main event who has pushed this, this trend is the integration of China to the WTO. C'est l'intégration de la Chine à l'Organisation Mondiale du Commerce. Once China has integrated the WTO in 2001, they have pushed all the world economy to the bounce, to the up, to the high level of the increasing, because they have, uh, because the, all the power of the Chinese dragon has uh, ha was been beneficial of all uh, the countries in all the world. So when China decided to be the factory of the world, they needed the, the natural resources to make operation of their economy. And UAE was one of the beneficial by exporting the petrol to China. Okay, so, so now, Russia, the GDP is the gross domestic product. C'est-à-dire c'est le PIB. C'est-à-dire c'est toute la c'est toute la production euh, 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 c'est toute la production regroupée ou toute la valeur produite durant une année par un pays sur un territoire donné All the value specifically. Yeah, it's my play. From 2008, they know a huge decrease of around 50% of 50 points of their GDP, why here? And here they know a decrease is due to, so simple, is the financial crisis. C'est la crise des subprime, subprime crisis. As UAE is fully integrated to the world economy, to the world finance, once the once the crisis has been started in United States of America, it has been impacted directly the economy of UAE. As we have said, as we have said, uh, sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, we have some guests at home. That's why they come to the. They want to enter to my. Uh, to my. We are, sorry. We are in a lockdown, so it's it's very normal that we are, <laughs> we are with many people <laughs> around us. That's why we are in, on mute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So, uh, so when the uh, as I said is. As, as UAE is a financial center, donc c'est une plateforme financière du Moyen-Orient, it's a financial center of the Middle East, right? Once the, the, financial, the financial crisis has started in the United States of America, it has, is due to the dominoes effect, it has impacted negatively the UAE economy. That's why they have known a, a decrease, a huge decrease in 2008 and after it has been bounced back, it's bounced back again from 2009. This is what, what is finally, quel est l'enseignement? What is the, the main learning of this, of the trend of the GDP of UAE? Is that once a country decides to open the economy to the world, 
okay, they become fully dependent of the world trend, world trend. It means when the world economy is in the good health, you are in the good health. But once the world economy is impacted, you became impacted as well. That's why the world economy provides prosperity, uh, but it's provide as well a lack of sovereignty. You became no longer sovereign of your economy. You became fully dependent on the world trend. Is it clear? Everything is clear for you. Otherwise, I, I had some questions on Facebook. <laughs> if, uh, it is about uh, UAA uh, yeah. while you were uh, talking about it. Um, they ask about the diversified economy, yes. about a renewable energy in this country, for instance, the sun energy particularly. And mm -hmm. they ask about, uh, I don't know if, if it is true, that it, uh, they, there is a security, but no democracy and trans transparency. Is there any, any, any link? <laughs> So uh, that was some yeah. some question from from our Facebook followers. If yes. we have any anything to say, thank you. Yeah, exactly. So about UAE, as as they are located in the Middle East, as it's um, they have during the full season, we can say that most of the time it's extremely hot, and they have and the, and the weather is very uh, wet. So they have capacity to, and it's the weather is dry. So it's dry, it's hot, dry uh, uh, season or uh, uh, climate. They have the potential to invest on the solar panel. It's same as it's same in Morocco. We have invested on the solar panel on the renewable energy in Warzazet. So they also invest at the same way. And it's very good question. They have the big potential to be one of the leader of the new renewable energy to, due to their specificity, due to their climate and the location. About democracy and, and lack of transparency, as I say, this is the main drawback of all the conservative country. Le monde, je, je vais le dire en français, le monde de transparence, c'est dû, c'est une spécificité de tous les pays conservateurs, de tous les pays orientaux et orientalistes. Que vous partez en Chine, au Japon, en Corée du Sud, ou en Russie, en Arabie Saoudite et même Qatar ou UAE, c'est un système qui, qui, qui impose. Le pays est tellement fort que il impose une respectabilité. Il n'y a pas de remise en question. You cannot ask questions. There is no, you cannot, the politics and the government. This is the main difference between all of these conservative countries and the democratic and liberal countries. If you, go, if you, if you decide to live in Sweden, you can see on justice the government, but in these countries, it's not possible it's impossible this is the main drawback but on the contrary they provide you stability they provide you security and you can grow your business and you can take benefits on the business opportunities I, 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 and i give my example i'm living in china like my, my residential permit is in china and i can never think or or dare i can never dare je n'oserai jamais uh, uh, criticize or see injustice the central government but this is this is their specificity this is their way of managing their countries and you can only follow these rules you can only follow the rules OK, 
can we as Moroccan learn something from this example to develop our development model? Um, so I think UAE is not the best example, the best inspiring model for Morocco. Why? The, the, the simple reason is that UAE has based their development, their, their development on natural resources. Ils ont basé leur développement ou leur stratégie sur les ressources naturelles. In Morocco, we don't have strong natural resources who can cover the main expenses of our, of our functionments, public functionments. So that's why we cannot, uh, you, you cannot be an inspiring leader, okay? Cannot be an inspiring model for us. The main is South Korea, is Singapore, is Korea, is China, is Turkey. All of these emerged and developed countries, they, they have been extremely weak after the end of the Second World War, but due to their uh, to their vision, to their anticipation, uh, the results was being very beneficial rather than our model. So, of course, you know, all my intellectual working, all my intent the, is, is in this way to, to enlighten the Moroccan elite to, be, to get the six keys from Chinese model because we can learn a lot from them. But I cannot go deeply to the subject because it's not the topic of today. Okay, so here are some economic indicators about the GDP growth. So they have known some quiet, reasonable For example, here the GDP growth is between 2.7 3.8. So it's really reasonable. And it, it's I can say it's very excellent GDP growth as a developed countries. When you play developing, when you realize such kind of performance of 3.8%, it's an amazing performance. In France, in Spain, in Italy, they cannot in they cannot surpass uh, uh, 1.5 percent of the GDP growth. The unemployment rate is quiet. The unemployment rate is 1.72%. It's, it's extremely low, which is an ex excellent performance. Their GDP per capita is around 40,698 US dollars. And this is uh, which play, and, and this, this this uh, performance plays UAE as one of the most um, as one of as one of the most um, as the highest GDP per capita in in the world with uh, with Qatar with Singapore with Norway with uh, uh, Brunei and so on. So GDP per capita, ça veut dire le PIB par habitant. It means it's the formula is when you divide the GDP divided on the, the number of population. The inflation rate is extremely low as well. They have a positive account balance. It means they export more than they import, which is a sign of prosperity. But the most important and most impressive economic data is the, the public debt. The public debt is around 20%. It's outstandingly low. It's outstandingly low, you know? For example, the, 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 for example, the public debt in, the, in, 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 in China, in, in, in Morocco is 100%. The public debt in China is 300%. The, the, the public debt in America is 250%. The public debt in, in Japan is 
you will tell me why the, the public debt in UAE is extremely low because is due to their natural resources and, and high demand of the gas and oil. They lend money. It's same as Algeria. It's such a, it's same as all is this common point and, and common specificities of all the exporting of petrol and gas. This is a huge advantage that they take benefit from that. Do you have any questions? Any questions? You can um, you can write it, write them, and you can also ask them. A voice. <laughs> we'll be happy to to hear from you. I'm checking if in Facebook I have something. I think I have. Mm -hmm. All say it about Facebook. They are following and happy. So I don't have any other question in Facebook, neither in. Okay, so let's move on. Okay. Let's good. On. Thank you. It, it's very good. It's very, very good. Okay. Okay. Here, as I said, this is the supplier's partner list in UAE. And we can say that China is the first supplier in UAE. And it represents 13% of all imported goods in 2016. And the second one is India. And the third one is Germany. Oh, no, sorry. The second one is United States. The third one is India. And the and third one, fourth one is Germany. So China now... This is really amazing that you, that you really need to understand because Middle East has been always, has used to be the predilect region for United States uh, interest. But now with the emergence of China, China is taken, taken over gradually, little by little <laughs> from United States leadership in this region and this is really, this is very problematic this is very very extreme and this is very uh, problematic uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for 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 united states you can see china became more and more powerful and it will tell me what do they what do they sell to uae or uae what what uae buy from china and here is about all the all the manufactured items which are necessary for their living for their daily living and here i was talking about electronic equipment tv phone uh, 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 kitchen equipment, kit furniture, everything, and also the textile. So everything which is that the people use in their daily life is made in China. And this is extremely important and extremely strategic. And that's why China is um, definitely a, a predilected and premier partner of UAE. Sell to UAE. What the United States sell to UAE, and here they sell the agro business items, like the food business, soya, milk, uh, uh, corn flakes, and, and all, the, all the United States agro business, and also the planes, the military equipment to UAE. So we can definitely, United States, sell more advanced and more added value products to, to UAE and China sell more uh, products for the daily use and less added value, which contain less added value than United States products. And also United States sold and sells the, the cars uh, to UAE. 
Yes, as I said, this is what, what I told you, what China export to UAE. The broadcasting equipment, like, like computers, like in the blue colors, it's about, it's the electronic equipment, telephones, video displays, air conditioners, electric heaters, and so on. And on the green color, c'est les produits du, du textile, it's apparel. Apparel means textile, tous les produits uh, du textile. And here it's about the t-shirts, shorts, um, uh, shoes, and so on. So all the, so for, all the daily use products are bought from China. <coughs> And here in 2016, China exports to UAE $25 billion and on the contrary, UAE has only export $3.85 billion, which, in, which create a gap of the current balance of around $21 billion as a budget minus or budget deficit is extremely high. Ça veut dire que which means, this is also another learning, never, ever, a natural resources can rival in terms of added value with the manufacturer or with industries. No matter the quantities of your barrel, of the wealth under the, your land, if you don't diversify your economy, if you don't invest on the human resources, if you don't make any production, you can never prosper, you can never develop, and you can never know uh, a budget uh, surplus with the foreign countries. That's why it's very important to be innovative and has an, a commercial advantage offer to the world if you want to prosper. Look at Russia. Russia is, is true. Geopolitically, they are very strong. Military, they are very strong, but economically, they are extremely weak because Vladimir Putin has been succeeded, was not able to modernize their economy. Look at South Korea, Japan, China, Singapore. They don't have any natural resources, but they are now, they are now the, the, the leaders economically due to their leadership on innovation and industries. It's very important to know that the human capital, the human capital is the most important asset of any countries. That's why education, education, education is the basic of this country, of any countries. As Confucius said, Confucius said, if you want, if your plan is for one year, plant a rice. If your plan is for 10 years, plant a trees. But if your plan is for 100 years, plant, educate your children. Education, invest on innovation, on education is the most prosperous, more sustainable, and the most efficient on the return on our investment. And Thank you so much for your watching. Thank you so much for your listening. And now I, can, I am here to answer to all of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bushpo, for um, this discovery, this, this new discovery with you. Uh, so um, participants in Zoom, you can, um, you can open your mic if you want to, uh, to, to have a, to a question if you have a question um i have a question from facebook <laughs> um to um, if you if you can uh, tell us more about this um he asked you <laughs> to talk about policy 
uh, of those countries, I, I, I think I mean the UAE, uh, with Ma Maghreb countries like Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and he talked about hegemony, like domination. Um, maybe he is saying that because of the huge investment that they have in these countries, but could we talk about domination? Could we? Uh... <laughs> I understand. I understand what he's meaning. He, he, he wants to talk about the cooperation between UAE and Morocco. And finally, yeah. who is the dominant? And why Morocco has used to be dominated in, the, in this cooperation with UAE? Exactly. Exactly. I, of course. No. Um, to be honest with you, have, uh, I want to see you. Can you can you unlock the video? Your video. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, Miss Sharifa. Yeah. You know. <laughs> To be honest, uh, when you, when for example, when when Morocco has been was taken the the independence, mm -hmm. they didn't have no natural resources except the fossil, but fossil was not so important to to, to create the prosperity. Mm -hmm. When you have when you don't have innovation, when you have a lot high level of analphabetism, and you need for your prosperity, for your stability, for your peace, to, to buy the natural resources, to attract, to attract the, the, the foreign investment. You have to compromise and to accept some restriction from your partners. You know, I, I will take the example of China. When China has opened the economy to the world in 1979, 1979 China, it's because they 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 have they they are they have they, they know a lack of technology development economic development and all in all the in all the field they have accepted all the restrictions imposed by the western countries yeah but the chinese government has been, has been very smart they said okay we accept all the impositions from the western countries mm -hmm. they can come they can ex exploit our labors. They can exploit our water, our natural resource. They can pollute everything in our country, but it, wa it will be only temporary. After we will learn, after we will strengthen ourselves, after we will become more powerful and therefore we, we can make a balance in our negotiation and impose more our restrictions. This is the natural negotiation between every country. So Morocco should be as smart as China. It's true is in 1970, in the 1980s, in the 1990s, we should and we were being forced to accept all the restrictions from the, the foreign country because UAE was very, very powerful, but moreover, Morocco developed their industries, they gain on innovation, they gain on education, then they can create a balance. Mm -hmm. I always to give the example of the new graduate people. When he integrates the, world, the, the, the market of work, when you, are, when you don't have any, if any experience, when nobody knows you, you have to accepts all the restrict all the restriction from your employer but it's after you enter this company and you show your abilities and you prove your distinction and you prove your add value and moreover you can ask to increase for your salary you can ask for a better work conditions and therefore you can even stretch them to change the company because you are valuable and demanded in the world market yeah so Morocco is same. Morocco, I think the future of Morocco will be brighter and brighter because, <laughs> because the world economy will be 
less and less dependent on the on the on the gas and oil and will be and now china will know a termination of their of, of their place as the factory of the world and morocco can attract a huge investment from china and from european for european industries and therefore by strengthening themselves and their economy then they, they will be more able to to impose their restrictions and i can say that actually morocco is managing very well their cooperation and their negotiation and the geopolitical forces with 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 the, with the middle East, eastern countries which is not so easy due to their because it's this region of middle east is full of conflicts full of um, geopolitical interest so it's very hard to impose your forces you know united states as the world leader has a lot of difficulties to impose to impose the leadership so morocco can only fall or at least defend their interest. Okay, nice. So it's normal that we accept this domination because we are in need, if you can say that, but we have to, you, you, you talked about uh, education, we have to educate ourselves to uh, learn from our experiences Exactly. To, to profit from this experience. I have yes. um, another question here. What is the cause of the last diplomatic crisis between Morocco and UAE? What did exactly happen? And another question after the crisis of coronavirus, do you think China's position in the international market remains the same? So <laughs> I have two different questions about crisis. Okay, I, I will start with the coronavirus. Uh, so do you think China's position in the international market will remain the same? No, definitely not. The coronavirus will change completely the, the, the world economic order, definitely. In the way that China will no longer be the factory of the world. Because, and I think the countries we will leave, we will know and we will establish more sovereignty in their political decision and in their economic decision. A lot of European and American companies and, and Australian companies will recolize or re-implement their industries in their land or in, the or in their neighborhood countries. But to be by, by this desire to be less and less dependent to China as the factory of the world, I don't think that they can completely uh, uh, relocalize or re-implement all the industries in their land because if, because if so, they will lose all their competitiveness because they can no longer sell, they can no longer be attractive because the labor cost in France, for example, or in Sweden or Germany is so high that if they want to maintain and to continue selling and selling in the, in the poor countries or in developing countries, they must sell in the attractive prices. And, and, and if they want to sell with, with, with the lower prices, they have to implement some of the supply chain industri industries in those emerging countries who can offer a, a low cost in their labors. So I think we will move, we will know just a move, a moving of the industries from China to the neighborhood, can, to the neighbor countries who, who will be closer to the final consumers. For example, to Turkey, Morocco, Egypt for Europe, and and they will implement more factories in Mexico for American um, markets. Yes, because by implementing the, their industries, 
in the neighbor countries who will be close to wind, they can, they can maintain their wind because the shipping dates will be lower and, and, and will be uh, less longer than, rather than uh, shipping from China. So definitely uh, Morocco will, can, can win, can gain benefits from these big world economic transformations. Okay, so here we have a question for you as an economic <laughs> lecturer. <laughs> the, what, what advice can you give to a Moroccan businessman who want to enter to the Emirati market and benefit from the economic growth of UAE? It's in the, the same <laughs> the same subject of um, of we can win and can gain from this um, this uh, this crisis this transformation. So, what could you advise to a Moroccan businessman to profit from this and enter to the uh, emirati market? Okay, good question. I think um, first of all, um, what kind of business cooperation we can establish with UAE? The first economic cooperation, which which comes to my mind, the first one is that we can lobby uh, the Moroccan platform and we can try to sell the Moroccan platform as uh, the Moroccan platform as, as an attractive land to attract the foreign investment. And definitely we can attract UAE foreign investment in the in the in the real estate and they can really gain a lot of funds by implementing their by uh, real estate project in morocco uh, 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 definitely and um, and also the, the 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 second business cooperation which will be more attractive and more interesting to analyze is as UAE, because UAE is not an industrialized country, so we cannot attract textile company from UAE who, who will sell to Europe because they don't have any electronic uh, industry or textile industries. But UAE is a platform, so we can establish a joint venture between Morocco and UAE. And finally, telling and and we can, by joining this venture with, China, with Morocco and UAE, we can more offer and we can more sell our platform to China, to Japan, or to, to Singapore, who are the industrialized country. We can say, okay, you can implement their, their industry to UAE for the East Coast of, of Africa, and you and can also implement their industries in Morocco for the west coast of Africa. So UAE and Morocco, they have a convergence and the complementary in the cooperation because UAE is also a platform for the industries to the, to the east of Africa, to Asia and Morocco as, as a platform to West Africa, to west of Africa and to the west of Europe. So we can join the venture and, and this joint venture can let us be more offensive and more attractive in our selling. And, 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 and of course as well, like for example, if there is some rocket industries who are interested of UAE of, or not UAE, but the Middle East countries, definitely it will be more profitable for them to open an office in UAE, which will be their representation of their selling in all of this region. Okay. Okay. Um, great. Uh, I had another question from our Facebook uh, followers. Uh, what could UAE do to fill the commercial gap exchange between China and UAE? They cannot. They, can. <laughs> they cannot. So no way, no chance. No, but uh, let me tell you something. There is, yes. uh, there are some useful deficits and there are non-useful deficits. Il y a un déficit utile. And deficit non-utile. 
the deficit with China is useful because Chinese product who enter the UAE, they don't compete with a UAE economy. They mm. call is a complementary, is a complement of their economy. But they are unusable deficits. The unusable deficit that Morocco knows is with Turkey. Le déficit commercial avec la Turquie est un déficit cruel. Is the, the deficit in the commercial exchange with Turkey is not useful, is, is dramatic because it destroys, because the, the Turkish product destroys and has destroyed all the Moroccan industries because the, the Turkish product, they compete with the Moroccan items. But for example, the deficit that Morocco has with, 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 uh, with, 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 with the United States of America is useful. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because what way? We buy the military equipment, we buy all the product that Morocco don't do, don't produce, and which is necessary to our production and to necessary to our functionment. So even we didn't fix, even we didn't have the free trade agreement with, with, with America, we will, leave, we will know the same deficit because it's a useful deficit. Because in the... Because Adam Smith said, and Ricardo said, you need to sell something that they own these countries that you need from them. So UAE has specialized in one field that they cannot, that they cannot let them compete with China. They push them, they let them in this situation to, to be complementary with, with China. They need a China. And this deficit is useful because it will not damage the sovereignty and the economy strategy of UAE. But for Morocco, the Turkish economy, the Turkish corporation, it destroys. It's a barrier for Moroccan industry and Moroccan strategies because, because Turkey and Morocco are the rivals, are the rivals because they have the same offers as because they, they want to place themselves as the industrial land to attract the foreign investment. So we need to, to establish protectionism with our rival and to be more open to our um, complementary uh, uh, partners. So I can say UAE, we not, cannot cover the gap with China and it's not in their interest to cover the gap because it's useful gap and use for the deficit. Yes. Great. I can say this is a great learning in English. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you. you. Thank you very much. So please, have you no other questions to, to our lecture experts? in English and also in business. So you can ask all your questions and he is all, always happy to, to serve us, thanks to him. I will, uh, advise, I will advise you to, to go on the YouTube and to listen. I will give you some references about selling. I will advise you Victor Antonio, which is the expert of selling. I will advise you Simon Sinek, which is an expert of entrepreneurship and the, and the person and personal development. I can advise you the conference to, to watch the conferences of Jack Ma. He's a really inspiring man, very inspiring. I can advise you to, to watch some documentaries of visual politics, visual politics, V-I, 
S U A R L P O L I T I K. Visual politics. It's it's wonderful video that can really enrich us and give us a lot of general knowledge of what is business, of what's happened in the world. <laughs> Three, four references. Simon Sinek for entrepreneurship and personal development. Uh, uh, Victor Antonio for selling. Visual politics for general knowledge. And Jack Ma uh, has as as inspiring entrepreneur. Can you write it forward us, please? So <laughs> write the, the the references. You mean, Mr. Boom Howard? Yeah, he 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 needs he need the references uh, written. Maybe you can repeat it, and I will write it in the chat. <laughs> Oh. Is so for our Facebook followers. The references to see are Victor Antonio in selling, Jack Ma or ins inspiring leader. Simon, Simon Sinek for entrepreneurship. And Visual politics for general knowledge. Thank you. Oh, have you any uh, other questions or any word you you want to to say to Mr. Berchkun? You can just open your mic, and we are listening. Hello. Hello, Miss Nadine. So we have a, a beautiful voice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to 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 ask if my uh, what I'm thinking about is is right. I think that because of the crisis, because of the the coronavirus, Morocco will take a little bit from from the capacity of of uh, manufacturing from. Uh, from uh, the from China, especially for the countries of uh, European countries, and I think uh, last week our Minister of Industry said it. They uh, in in indirectly, uh, he said that uh, a lot of a lot of uh, companies, a lot of European co companies, especially, they are talking to the Moroccan Ministry to to establish their companies here in morocco and to 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 change it a little bit like uh changing the localization like uh, uh mr Kron just said so uh we are more near than china and uh, uh we are competitive compatible too because we started manufacturing like, like we, we uh, uh like all, uh, we all know, we started with the uh, automotive industry and we know that we can keep going. We have the labors that uh, these, can, uh, these uh, companies needed and even the cost will be low. And I think that it's for the near future, I think that the, camp, the uh, economic industry in Morocco, especially for the manufacturing, will be super, super good. Exactly. So this is every crisis provide opportunities. And I will tell you something is that we can, we will not, we will not 
only attract the foreign factories. We will always we will also attract the Chinese factories. Why? Because you know this trend of of the relocalization of the world of the new placement of the supply chain is emanated from the internal factor from China and external factor from China. China itself had decided they don't want to be only the factory of the world and they have invested on research and development and they have in increasing the labor cost to be able to enlarge the middle social classes and to also to sell the, the high qualitative product. Huawei, Oppo, uh, uh, Xiaomi, Tencent, Alibaba, and all of these new innovative products are the result of, this, of the Made in China strategy 2025, who has been launched in 2013. So it's because they became expensive and no longer attractive in terms of cost, Chinese factories itself decide to implement part of their industries in the foreign countries who can really acquire them this, 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 uh, this low cost in terms of, in, 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 in terms of labors. I'm talking about Ethiopia, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Turkey, and also Morocco. So Morocco is the gateway of all the international factories who are selling to Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and the East Coast of United States of America. Do you know that the first foreign investor, the, the first foreign employer in Morocco is not France, is not China, is Japan the forest countries in, at the east. Why? Because the Japanese, the Japanese government, the Japanese elite, they know that by implementing the factories in Morocco, they can sell more effectively, uh, uh, um, rapidly, and with a lower cost to Europe and Africa. So when you have some so high credible reference as Japan, of course, China will follow because China, what is the leader? What is the inspiring model for China is Japan. So if Japan do that, China will follow. I think Morocco has a brighter future. They just need to take benefits of, this advent, of these opportunities. The opportunities always come but it's also the capacities of the leader, of the entrepreneur of the country to take benefit of this opportunity and to go to the action, to go forward to the actions. And also we can say why we are much better placed as Algeria or Tunisia or Egypt because of our anticipating policy. Morocco has anticipated all this coming trend with, with the uh, uh, plan d'accélération industrielle, with the, with the plan of industrialization. The acceleration of their industrialization plan has been established of 2015. And the main goal of this plan was to create 500,000 jobs in industries. And this plan or the strategies has forced the Morocco to create some attractive ingredients to charm the foreign investment to come to Morocco. Free zone, attractive in, in the fiscality and taxes regime, lower cost, qualified cost, free trade agreements. You know, China now, they can avoid the... the the trade war with with US by can avoid this free trade the, the trade war by implementing by implementing the factories in Morocco and therefore selling to Europe Africa and the and the east coast of, of America so definitely is is a gateway definitely it could be a card could be a rule key for the international for the international investors.
Thank you for this likeness. Oh. <laughs> Miss, yeah, thank you so much, Sharifa. Miss Hasna, definitely we have to learn Chinese. China will be the future powerful language of business. Sorry. So definitely. Uh, China will be much more, more and more powerful and will be the language of the world business. China is now the single largest economy of the world, will be the largest one in 10 years later and will be the leader in several fields. And of course, when a country lead economically and also will lead culturally and therefore, therefore we need to learn from their culture and to learn the language. By learning language is the key to understand the deep culture of this country. Yes, we have here. Yes, Hasna, China is useful language. Yeah. So, uh... I, I had another question, uh, a last question in, in Facebook, but I think uh, it's uh, it, it joined <laughs> what uh, you have said about Af about Morocco to be a leader in Africa. They, they ask what could Moroccan companies do to develop um, their business in the market uh, of Africa. Um, so we have learned that if Morocco uh, used their potential of, of leadership and uh, and can have uh, many wins from this transformation he could be a leader in africa as if i have understood understood well as japan in asia so uh, japan is the leader and is the um, inspirational <laughs> if we can say country for others so we can follow the path and be the leader and the inspirational country for Africa. And you have, if you have um, a last word about this or about all Def what we have learned, you have the mic. Definitely, Morocco has been, has used to be the, uh, an inspiration and the leader in Africa. And also we have, and also we, we were the leader in Europe during eight centuries in Andalusia, in Spain. Definitely, but actually currently, we need to be loyal to, to what our ancestors did and made Morocco as great. And we need to make Morocco great again. We, we should not count only on government because the development of a country is not only based on the government policies, it's also the involvement of the civil society. We need, to be, we need to be more courageous. No longer say, we should no longer say that. We should no longer adapt a victimization in our talking, our speech, and be more responsible and be brave and, and to sacrifice and also to tell the truth, to tell the truth. And also to be able, if, if you want to get your due and one government people don't help you, you can call the, the Moroccan medias and denounce them and launch them. So we need to be responsible and no longer blame the others on our failure. The success is, is mainly about mindset. We need to acquire the winning mindset. And the meaning mindset is to take responsibilities and also to believe on our strengths. I will tell you, I will tell you a very wise old saying in French. Uh, sorry, I will tell you in French, but I, I just need to look in forward.
Okay, <laughs> this, uh, this expression, tant qu'une nation conserve la conscience de sa supériorité, elle est féroce et respectée. Dès qu'elle ne l'a plus, elle s'humanise et ne compte plus. When a nation is considers and is conscious of their superiority, it becomes powerful. Once it doesn't believe on their strength, it disappears. So as I told you, we need to believe on your country. If we don't believe in our countries, if on any difficulty we face, we think to, 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 to immigrate, we think to, to live away, never Morocco will bounce back. The Moroccan people, they have big responsibilities on our future and our destiny. We need to beat, we need to struggle, we need to be responsible, and we need to be We need to believe on ourselves and to go ahead. Morocco has a tremendous opportunities, but we need to be endurance and go ahead. And there is no any big success without suffering, without sweating, without enduring. That's why we need to educate ourselves on How, what is the path of success? The path of success is not to ask, it's to give. Don't ask what country need to give you. Ask what you can provide to your country. This is important. I can tell you, Morocco is a big country, is a big civilization, but The civil, the, the civil society need to be more aware of their level of responsibilities in our, for our development, definitely. Yes, great. So, don't know if you have another questions. So, oh, they. Just confirm <laughs> what you believe, you believe, believe in yourself. Be please believe in yourself. Believe in your country. Believe, I tell you, believe not, not on dreaming. Believe because this believing is real, because it's related to the real databases, the, the, the real characteristics inspire us, push us to adopt a positive and optimistic attitude on our countries, on our country. We should not only think, oh, after, after any failure, any difficulties, we, we think to go back, to, to leave. I didn't, I, I went to China because I want to strengthen myself, but my biggest goal is to always go back to my country and to serve my country. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Benchkun, we don't feel the time with you. <laughs> But I have a last question uh, because um, some follower who is, was insisting, um, he said, thank you first for your excellent expose. And uh, my question is, what will be the future economic poll After COVID-19? In Morocco. In Morocco, I, I guess. He, 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 he didn't specify the country, but I guess in Morocco. <laughs> Morocco, Morocco is... I'm sure that Moroccan government will establish, will put a lot of effort to, the, to valorize the Moroccan potential, the Moroccan industries, and the Moroccan uh, uh, skills. So definitely after the COVID-19, Morocco will accompany, will support any good business project, entrepreneurial project, any startup project, financially, and also based on training. So the, the future of Morocco will be based on <laughs> exporting 
our talent. So it will be industries and service and digital technology, the digitalization, the, the digitalization of our economic circuits. So I, I advise the Moroccan engineers, the Moroccan talent to think on how can we be entrepreneur, how can we launch our business and how can we integrate ourselves to the, to the, to, to the, to the ecosystem of entrepreneurship in Morocco. Yeah. This is and and uh, he, he has just add in the world so it is the same thing in the world or it is specific to morocco uh, in the world every, every country will try to be more sovereign more protectionist to pref to make some preferences of our industry first and after and after the outside so we will move so every country will be more nationalist more sovereign more protectionist and definitely the new sector that will be that will emerge is digital uh, digitalization and also uh, uh, i think is mainly the digitalizations and to provide innovation and also the artificial intelligence and the robotization of our economy so my advice if you have any solutions to improve the digitalization process in the healthcare system, in education, in the administration, in, in, in the industries, you'll be valorized, you'll be supported because it will be the advantage, the comparative advantage that can lead any industries, any companies to the leadership, definitely. Oh, thank you very much uh, for your generosity, your yeah. flexibility. You you give you give us um, uh, much more <laughs> this time, more discovery, more more learning, more knowledge. Um, we we really thank you, and we thank uh, we we are thanking also Club des Dirigeants and Mr. Distrif, who is um, with us and uh, was waiting and uh, and listening with us. So uh, thank you, Mr. Benchkron, for your time. Last word, believe, optimism, positivism, believe in your country and believe in yourself. That was the success key of our previous glory and that will be the mandatory ingredient to our future glory. So oh, thank you for the last word. Thank you believe <laughs> and believe also that with Club des Dirigeants uh, we are um, doing all our best to um, to give you everything which could help you in your life personal and professional I will be always with you I yes. will be <laughs> you supporting you no matter what will happen in the Thank future you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank because you very much. I love you. That's it. We love you too, and we love your manner that uh, and your 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 sweet and your your positive energy that you give with you. So yeah. thank thank you, uh, participants in Zoom and also our Facebook followers. Don't forget our webinar is. Uh, is saved on a uh, live in Facebook, so you can uh, watch it again. You can share it with your, uh, your, with your friends, with your family, with everyone, and you go nowhere <laughs> because in a few minutes, in a few minutes, in exactly seven or eight minutes, we will have another excellent webinar to how to take decisions as a. Uh, an enterprise manager with Mr. Zuhir Usama. Donc, euh, ne, ne vous éloignez pas, <rire> juste le temps de prendre un verre d'eau. Nous sommes toujours avec vous euh, dans quelques minutes. Je vous donne rendez-vous à 20h exactement avec notre nouveau, notre prochain webinaire. Euh, comment prendre des décisions pour euh, les entreprises, pour les chefs d'entreprise avec Monsieur Zuhir Usama. Oui. Uh, Mr. Sharifa, I want to say you are yeah. a wonderful person. I love your positive energy and you are shining 
tu es rayonnant, tu es shining. And thank you so much for your presence. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I do. I really appreciate these words from you. Uh, I appreciate all the, the sweet words that I am um, I'm seeing in in chat, in Zoom, in Facebook, and I'm happy to be here to serve uh, Club des Dirigeants, to serve uh, all our intervenants in uh, this webinar. Thanks. Thank you very much. So, see you in few minutes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.